Hello everybody, ReaperHunter23 here for another countdown. As you may have guessed by now, I am a very, very big fan of video games. I am also a very, very big fan of swords. Put them together and what do you get? A pretty awesome combination. Ten really awesome combinations, in fact. And I'm here to give you my top ten coolest swords in video games. Now, what I mean by coolest is pretty much just overall appeal. I'm not looking at just usefulness in the game. I'm looking at that, and design, origins of the sword, all sorts of stuff. So it's not just one particular thing. Also, only one game per series and only games I've played. So now that we have those rules out of the way, let's get started. <laughs> In Onimusha 2, the first powered up weapon you get is a lightning katana called Bariato, which is a pretty cool sword, and it's also my favorite weapon in the game, period. Like, of all the other weapons, which include an ice spear, an earth hammer, and a naginata that's wind elemental, this one has the best balance with the one having good range and lacks in, like, power, the other one having good speed, but lacks in range, and the other one having good power, but lacks in speed. This one has a nice balance of all of those aspects, and made it a lot of fun to slay the Genma with. Also, it has the coolest magic attack in my opinion, with the lightning jab and the combination. And the more you level it up, the cool looking the thing gets. But all in all, I'd say that if I were to go on a samurai adventure with Jubei, it would definitely be the lightning sword that I would take with me. So picking a sword from the Dragon Age series was kind of hard, because it's home to all sorts of unique and cool types of swords throughout the game, but ultimately I went with Vigilance from Dragon Age Awakening. I could try to explain to you why, but I think Zevran put it best. That is a sexy sword, and I must have it. But in all seriousness, Vigilance is probably the best sword in the lot of Dragon Age Origins, if you include all the DLC in the main game. It's an Infinity Plus One sword, and when you're forging it, you even have the options to customize it in a few ways, like if you want it to hit harder, if you want to be able to uh, recover better, there were a few other options. But the sword is so awesome that it even gets its own place in the epilogue, where it gets stolen from your character, and then eventually it hops around from user to user. It almost becomes like an XP of Soul Edge because people begin to think that it has a mind of its own. So, Vigilance is sweet. It's probable that if you've played Dark Cloud, you probably didn't spend time leveling up every character's weapon. Because. If you did, you were probably borderline sadomasochist. dedicated. You were probably very dedicated. But anyway, so the most important weapons were the ones of Toen, the main character, because he was the strongest one. And those are the swords, also. I decided to put in my favorite of his potential ultimate weapons, and that is the Chronicle Sword. The Chronicle Sword takes a lot of time and effort to build up. Normally, I only ever got it by the time I like hit the last dungeon, but that was just fine because boy did that time pay off. Because by the time I got the Chronicle Sword, I was one-shotting everything but the final bosses. So there's that. It even has an upgrade in the 100 level dungeon extra thing creatively named the Chronicle 2, but the difference there is that it's golden instead of silver. The design of the Chronicle Sword is sweet, I like the way that it's got those emeralds inserted into the middle, 
And the description of this sword is awesome. Worlds crumble before its might. And the world may not have, but every enemy that I ran up to with that sword in my hand did crumble. So when it comes to swords, real life, or in video games, katanas are some of the coolest ones. So when a video game has a character with a katana that's red and has a trigger that can spew fire when he draws it, what do you get? You get Jetstream Sam's katana. So this is definitely the coolest sword in Metal Gear Rising to me. It is red. I love the color red. That awesome trigger draw thing that Sam uses is sweet, and he uses it to complete the own ride in the beginning, which is great. All the other cool stuff that he does in this boss fight, like that rush forward slash thing, and even some of the stuff he does in the DLC is really sweet. And then you even get your own opportunity to take this awesome sword out for a spin in the final battle when his ID lock comes undone and you use it against Armstrong after Raiden's sword broke, because Raiden's sword is silly. This sword is awesome though, I really just like the design in general, and the character that uses it is just awesome. So the Blade of Olympus from God of War is a pretty strong weapon. Zeus used it to seal away the Titans in the Titan War in this universe. You use it as Kratos, you pour all of your godlike powers into it, and it becomes a very useful asset for defeating the Colossus of Rhodes, and it becomes a real fun weapon in New Game Plus. In God of War 3, it becomes the weapon that you use in Rage Mode, which is cool. Not to mention, this sword has a decent body count. Like, I think it's killed like three or four main characters, or important characters. Um, kills Kratos, technically. Athena. Gaia. It sealed away all of the Titans. And you nearly kill Zeus with it at the end of God of War 2. Yeah, this sword is pretty impressive. Its design is pretty cool, too. It's got all sorts of blue energy flowing through the gilded blade. It looks really nice. So those qualities are nice enough to make this godlike blade take number 6 on this list. Nebulum from Tales of the Abyss is probably one of the more interestingly designed swords in on this list. Like, if you look at it, it's got this sweet black and red color scheme that I really like. It splits two ways, it pulses like it's alive, it's really cool. Anyway, the story of this sword is, you get it after fighting a Blade Rex, I do believe is what it's called. You see the sword in its back, and the, the entire boss fight. I was going, if I don't get that sword after this fight, I'm going to be annoyed. It turns out that this sword happens to be a catalyst weapon, which works for some kind of special phonic art. You go through this really long side quest, and you eventually encounter the super boss of the game, Nebulum, which is Jade's old teacher person. After you defeat Nebulum, the sword itself its damage stats go from being zero, like it doesn't do anything more than Luke's strength, to being however many enemies you've killed add on to that by one point. That is really impressive because that has potential to be the strongest weapon in the game, depending on who you play as. So all in all, this sword is different and very strong and it manages to notch the number 5 spot. Ah. 
Choosing a weapon from the Soul Calibur series pretty much boiled down to two choices. Soul Edge or Soul Calibur. I chose Soul Edge because I think it has a better design. The Legend of the Soul Edge pretty much goes like this. It was a sword born from human hands, and after devouring the souls and bathing in human blood after so many battles, it eventually became sentient, and it had all sorts of cool powers, like corrupting its user. After this, legend started sprouting about it be being like the ultimate weapon, and some people would try to find it for the reasons of gathering power, or reviving someone, or maybe they just wanted a cool-looking sword in their collection. Either way, Soul Edge's most recognizable form is definitely in the hands of Nightmare throughout the series, being its great, evil-looking greatsword. Although it can change shape depending on who's wielding it, like, um, for example, Taki would have, like, the knife Soul Edge, or Mitsurugi would have a katana. I'd say that my favorite design of the Soul Edge is probably Nightmare's Soul Edge completed from Soul Calibur 2. I just think the organic look of it is really cool, not to mention it is a powerhouse when it comes to using it in battle. So all in all, the legends and mystique of the Soul Edge are very interesting, and the fact that it's also a really useful kind of weapon in-game helps it gain the number 4 spot in this list. Oh man, choosing a sword from the Final Fantasy series. It's like I was a bomb diffuser choosing between the red or blue wire. Ultimately, I decided to go with the Masamune. Nope, not that Masamune. This Masamune. So, what possessed me to choose this sword over Cloud's Buster Sword or... Sephiroth's katana? Well, those are ludicrous just because they're huge and they don't look like you would be able to swing them, at least not conveniently. This is ludicrous because it just looks so strange in its design. It's got so many weird little dips and turns in the blade. And as evidenced with number five on this list with Nebulon, I really like these kind of exotic looking designs. They look fun to me. The Buster Sword is just a big sword, and the Masamune that Sephiroth uses is just a really long katana. I really like katanas, but still, this is more interesting to me. So the effects of the sword itself when Orin uses it, he can break the damage limit, that's good, because Orin is one of the hardest hitters in Final Fantasy X, most of the time, for me at least. It also gives him this, like, Lucario-like effect where the lower his health is, the more damage he'll do. I don't, I don't know what the exact like output change is, but the less health he has, the more damage he will do. So this sword has a really cool design and an interesting dynamic for gameplay, and that is good enough to place it as my favorite sword from the Final Fantasy series, and number three overall. So a majority of you probably think that I am... Shit insane. But I can't worry about what you might think of me for putting this at number two, because I have to discuss why I think it's so awesome. So, this sword has appeared in so many games since The Link to the Past that it's become a staple of the series that is almost like having Link's green clothes. And it's also one of my favorite staples of the series because I really love swords. Duh. What makes this sword so great is that it is the 
goal that you strive for when playing most Zelda games. If Ganon is the main villain, you can rest assured that you will be picking up the Master Sword. And if you've played a Zelda game before, you will be excited for that. Because every time you draw this thing, it is an awesome moment. It's just moments that I will remember for as long as I am playing a game. So, it's your best weapon, it kills things faster, it's pretty much the means to an end for your quest, you can't beat Ganon without it, or Demise in Skyward Sword's case. It has a rich history behind it after so many games and Skyward Sword expanding on that even more. And the best part is that if you're a veteran Zelda player, effectively you are the reason the Master Sword is so famous, because you've been because you've been playing as Link since Ocarina of Time, or A Link to the Past, or Skyward Sword, or what have you. You literally make the Master Sword in Skyward Sword. So, you're, you, the player, are part of the reason why this sword is such a legend to begin with. So with a rich history, bold decision making on my part, and being a general icon among video game weapons, or video games in general, the Master Sword takes number two on this list. The only question is, what the heck do I like more than the Master Sword? You may have noticed that there is a series that I'm a big fan of that has been absent from this list up until now. That would be the Devil May Cry series. With me being such a big fan of this series, and they're having all sorts of stylish swordplay action. Leaving it out of this list would just be an act of... <laughs> so, which stylish weapon did I choose? Was it Nero's motorbike sword, the Red Queen? Nope. Was it Virgil's Yamato? Nope. Alright. Let's find out, shall we? by the legendary Dark Knight himself, the Sparta. This sword is obtained in the first game after you beat Nello Angelo for the third time and you retrieve the second half of Dante's Mother's Amulet. After that you join it with the sword that you had at the beginning of the game, Force Edge, and it turns into this mighty beast of a weapon. The Sparta not only is a sword, but it also turns into a scythe when you use Round Trip and it will extend to a spear-like length when you use Stinger. It is fantastic. I also, this is, this sword goes over the Master Sword mainly for sentimental reasons, being that the Sparta is my favorite weapon in the game, and Devil May Cry is my favorite game that I've ever played. So, yeah, and I play it all the time, it's the best weapon to use. It has the damage output of Ifrit, essentially, and it has the speed of Alistair. In spite of not having a Devil Trigger, I find this sword to be better than both of those weapons. And then when it finally does get a Devil Trigger in the final battle with Mundus, it does not disappoint. You can shoot fireballs from your hands in rapid succession, and the sword will extend the stupid flames. Unfortunately, Dante gives it away and right before the last mission because you like seeing shenanigans. But New Game Plus is just a whole new adventure to use it with. So, with the Sparta being an absolute beast of a weapon and a bit of sentimental reasons, that's how it manages to take number one on the list. I would really love to hear your guys' opinions on what your favorite swords in gaming are, so be sure to share below. This has been Reaper123, and thank you for watching.